Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Higher Density Living with your hosts, Alexander McKegg and Jason Rigby. Before we kick it off, we do want to thank our sponsors, Quality Miles to NM of New Mexico. If you are in the Colorado, New Mexico, or Texas area and you are looking for an educative process on purchasing a car, no coercion involved, and they'll deliver it to you. No better place to look than the high-quality cars at qualitymazdanm.com. And our second sponsor I want to thank is Tartle.co. Tartle.co is the only data marketplace in the world that allows human beings to buy and sell data, ethically source it, and uplift others through big seven initiatives. And we encourage you to sign up for free forever at Tartle.co, T-A-R-T-L-E dot C-O. Okay, Jason, kick us off. Thank you for letting me do that plug. Oh, no, I love it. Well, James, John Michael Greer wrote a book called The Element Encyclopedia of Secret Societies. So we've been doing these shows on secret societies. So I stumbled across this one man, and it was so interesting to see something that was happening in 1920. He lived from 1927 to 1929, to 79. So, I mean, yep. 79 wasn't – you were born in the 80s, right? Uh, no, I was born in the early nineties, just before early the nineties ended. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was born in 73. So this guy was still alive when I was six years old. He died. That's His awesome. name is James H. Modell or Modell. You know, I don't know Modell. how to pronounce it, but he was an American occultist and a fascist. So this is, first of all, <laughs> uh, it's going to be cool. We start to see when, how do you put even those two things together. The guy's a fascist and he's also an occultist. People can be whatever the hell they want in this world. But what we find is that there seems to be a trend, especially with what we've seen with QAnon today in those groups with extreme right-wing neo-Nazi fascism Mm -hmm. and other occult practices. Things that deal with extraterrestrials and seances and quantum technology and all those things of the sort. There's always a blend. And I guess if you're going to go to the far right on your political views, there's no reason why you shouldn't dose it with a little bit of magic, right? (laughs) Well, well, this guy is your grandfather. This guy is the forefather of American fascist occultism. Crazy. And people are like, what do you mean American fascist occultism? People don't understand. They think fascism, that's, that's something that happened in Europe. That's not the United States. How could that? How could you even appropriate both those things together? So, Jason, let's make a little bit of a bridge here about, you know, the point when before being a neo-Nazi was trendy in Europe. Can we? Can you walk us through this with Madol um, yeah, and him being considered uh, the first Harding neo-Nazi? He was born in New York City. He lived most of his life in New York City. But this is interesting, as so a lot of people in that time frame, science fiction began to really take hold. You yeah. know, this is the early '30s. 40s coming into the 40s so science fiction became a a super cool thing and we all love those old school science fiction and he was an avid reader of it um but he gravitated towards there was an actual group of people this is crazy that were fascist there was a fascist wing of science fiction fan community so the cures these are the og 1949 <laughs> yes, yes. cures yeah these are these are are, are QAnon, and they're taking science fiction and taking like how you hear the far right taking orwell stuff and making connections or they're oh, are like QAnon's taking uh these these things that are unrelated and then trying to you know uh, this is a funny and I, I want people to understand this and, and you've heard of this have you heard of like the five connections and it gets you to kevin bacon Oh, yeah, the degrees of separation, then you're at Kevin Bacon. Yeah, yeah, and so like everybody always tries to find a way, and you can always get back to Kevin Bacon just because he was in so many movies. So, you know, you yeah. can find somebody, or if, you know, there's like, it's a cool game, and you can look it up online. This is kind of what QAnon does. <laughs> and it's really easy to do because you can put Trump in Paris, France, and then from there, now he's in a, lo- a geolocation. Now you can tag him to all kinds of things that happened in Paris, France. Well, he was December 7th, you know, uh, 2017 was in Paris, France. Well, December 7th, 2010, when he's 777, you know, that's Jesus's number for when he's going to return, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, you could say, well, December 7th, nineteen seven, Hitler was in Paris, France also, you know, so you can make so many of these stupid connections. Well, and this is what happens. First of all, we live on a cyclical calendar. 
So the likelihood that someone does something on the same day as someone else, what, one in 365, maybe a little bit less over the period yes. of many, many years, it becomes so likely. And especially if it's one political leader or another. And guess what? Mm -hmm. We're human beings. A lot of yeah. things run in cycles. People put a new lipstick on the same old neo-Nazi fascist ideas, and they keep appropriating it going forward. It doesn't seem to me that much of a stretch. So if for them to start taking apples and oranges and comparing them, which is inappropriate, and then putting ridiculous amounts of occult things behind it to try and back it up with whatever sort of superstition or magical or celestial power will be backing up this agenda that these ultra right wing groups have fundamentally it's no good. But when one thing, one fucking coincidence, one coincidence hits, they sing in the Hills. It's like, it's over. Like it's the but, best thing in the world. It's all legit. Even though 99.9999999999999% of the time, it's an absolute lie and not even true and nothing's actually occurred. Well, let me give you one. This is interesting. This has been going around for the last three or four months. So the guy that started Victoria's Secret um, gave a lot of money. And I think, uh, I may be wrong, you can look it up. Victoria's Secret founder um, let... Epstein stay or donated his whole like penthouse apartment or something like that. Millions of dollars. Okay. Maybe, you, maybe you can check on that real fast. Just fact check me. Um, and so it was a big part of Epstein donated money, did all kinds of stuff. So yeah. now all of that, if we look it up and they've done investigative reporting on it with good reporters, not these, you know, crazy corporate owned reporters, but I gotta, I gotta, t so let's talk about that real fast. I'm, I'm going to side note. Did you know, that 80% of the commercials on cable TV now, whether it's CNN, CNBC, data, I, I'm talking uh, 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 news, uh, CNBC, MSNBC, Nightly News, NBC Nightly News, CBS, all of them, Fox News, all of them, that 80% of the commercials, and you can look this up, 80% of the commercials is pharmaceutical. Yeah. So sure. who has, who controls the news? Pharmaceutical companies do. Yeah, they're dumping because all the money into all of these. They're paying so whether you're, the news studios. Whether you're watching Fox News or CNN and you're like, oh, my God, I'm a, I'm a super liberal. I'm going to watch MSNBC. Good luck yeah. on watching those commercials and see who's controlling the narrative. Yeah, the narrative is completely controlled by the biopharmaceutical industry. Yeah, so that's proof. We can see that. That's logical. But to take this Victoria's Secret, did you see something with that on Epstein? Yeah, I did. Yeah, him repeating ignored a thing, ignored repeated things. People telling him like you got to disassociate from Epstein and what you're doing. So yeah, that's there. Yeah, but they jump to the conclusion and say this: Victoria. The reason he named it Victoria's Secret. This is so absurd and it's offensive, actually. Uh, and this is QAnon. Victoria's Secret is the secret that the founder had is that all Victoria's Secret models are trans. That's hysterical. How, one, that's offensive to the trans community. Number two, it, it's absolutely absurd. The What the proof QAnon, do you have in any of that? There's no proof. The QAnon community says things in so many figures of hate, anti-Semitism, mm -hmm. neo-Nazi yes, exactly. fascism. Uh, sexual misappropriation, like so many things that are absolutely false, backwards, hateful, illegitimate, but they spur it up constantly. And this whole group feeds into these same ideas over and over and over again. Why? Because they think that there's some fulfilling secret agenda for themselves that these super elite groups are going through the trouble to dress yes. absolutely stunning women in Victoria's Secret gowns, lingerie, whatever you want to call it, and then call them transgender people. And first of all, what's the matter with transgender people? They're human beings. Who cares? Yeah, if, why is, if, it, if, why is it even a thing for you? Transgender model, who cares? It's anybody who sits outside – of their pure white race supremacist group that they currently have as QAnon, if you sit yes. outside of that realm, you will be a target of their hate. You will be a target of their own media. And I want people to realize when we have high density living, we have a community of one. You can see that on the screen. That's the number one yeah. thing on our website. Whenever you're far right or far left, you're creating hate either side. And that's yeah. where uh, you're not a community of one. So to be super far right, right, QAnon, that's what we're talking about right now, 
and we'll do an episode on the far left and where that originated from. But to be this far right, crazy, neo-Nazi type uh, hate filled, how are how is that spiritual in any format? It's not. This is modern day polarization that removes the human element. It does not seek to understand. There's no equanimity in the thought. It's a thought that creates hate and perpetuates hate and actually slows human evolution. And it's important that we speak about this so we can highlight what drives people over to those sides, what keeps them trapped in those sides, what keeps a lack of understanding in those groups, what slows their own evolution. They don't realize that they're talking about being supreme, doing all these things, evolving mm-hmm. faster. It's actually inhibiting the revolution. That's the biggest logical fallacy that they live in. And whether you're on the right side or the left, if you are not perfect equanimity in your mind and balance and seeing the value in every single human being as being a human, being a piece of creation, then you're slowing evolution down for yourself. You're not actually getting ahead. You're doing more harm than good. Yeah. And, and, and I want to get back uh, to this. Uh, we'll have to do a second episode here soon, but on this, but at the age of 18, Madol, uh, he founded the uh, animus party. And this was of course, a radical right wing political movement and most of its support was coming from the science fiction fans but there was a a veteran pro-nazi organizer by the name of kurt murdick and he had founded the national renaissance party and this was a big party go ahead the nrp right right nrp this was um in 1949 when they had their founding right Mm-hmm. And it was yes. formerly in the German section of Manhattan called Yorkville. So what they said is that this National Renaissance Party is what Hitler couldn't do. And they wanted to bring it here to this ripe, industrial, commercial aspect of the United States. And why? Mm-hmm. Because they had an occult narrative that their Garden of Eden, one biblical term, according to Madol was in North America to a geographic location for them to go to, which was also one of the larger victors after World War II, and that they appropriated it to the stories of Plato talking about Atlantis, saying that this was the new Atlantis and that a godlike race of, not people, but godlike race of white people would find it. So the thought was that in 1949, post-World War II, Madol and his buddy, who spun up the NRP, were over here with a small German community of 50 followers trying to push a neo-Nazi fascist agenda in the United States because they thought this would be their new Rhineland. Yes. Wow. Glad I, did I set the base for that? So let's keep going here. Yeah, and so he recruited Madol and... uh he became the NRP's leader. Madol held it up until his death, 1979. So he was he was the leader of this party um, yeah. for 30 plus years. And what I want to get into on the next episode is uh, getting into his allegiance to Hitler. I want to get into uh, neo-Nazi economic theory, uh, the third way, and capitalism and communism. I think that would be super interesting. But to close this out, uh, Alexander, what I want you to talk about is uh, fourth density. We've heard this from Raw. Yeah. And what it takes to go from third to fourth to create unity globally and how any of these movements that, that we're currently experiencing in Europe, especially um, this far right, uh, and we see here in the United States also how it destroys that uh, us becoming fourth density. Yeah. So the fourth density is a density of love. And that term fundamentally misunderstood by most of humankind uh, is the term of understanding. It's to look at another human being and understand that they are a human being much like you. They are part and parcel of creation. So being able to move into the fourth density is like I've left the density of self-awareness, which is the third density, and I've gone to fourth. I can now understand others. I can share that empathy. I can see where they are coming from. I can understand what connects us in a very unitary mind of what we are all doing together on this closed planet here. And when we have these pressures that are occurring with extremely right-wing groups or extremely left or anything of the sort, anything that removes understanding, creates misunderstanding, confusion, and fear, 
creates ideas of separation. Those things inhibit our ability to transition as a whole. It slows down truth from reaching those who need it most. But what these people don't understand, which is what they will seek to understand in the future, is that their illogic with what they've been doing, with the stories they preach and the communities they drive through hate, create pressures in this planet, pressures amongst our human society where they will boil themselves out because pressure creates heat and they will isolate yeah. themselves so much to the point that they will kill themselves off because they refuse to interact. They refuse to be a part of the human narrative. They refuse to understand everyone else. So polarize yourself if you will. It's just a natural occurrence of this stage of the evolution and it only gets worse before it gets better. It doesn't need to occur, but through this choice, through what people have asked for through their series of choices, have led them to be a part of these groups only to find that they will find themselves in a deeper state of confusion and hopefully strong enough to bounce them back to a state of equanimity in the middle and to move themselves into the fourth density. And they are more than welcome to do so under their own free will. And we must res- we must remember here, just because Jason and I are speaking about these groups that are highly polarized. We don't hate them in any way, shape, or form. We're just strictly hiding and highlighting illogic and how they are doing a disservice to themselves and other members of the human race. But beyond that, everybody has a choice to do what we want, and we respect the fact that they are making those choices. And that's fundamentally a very important thing to do. And that is a large level of understanding, and we hope that everyone can start to build that sort of attitude and perspective on life going forward. I love that. Thank you very much.